on. He's batting cleanup on a report day. Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures. Oliver, thanks for being on. Well, what are your thoughts here? Well, certainly uh, nice to see some green on the screen, especially for the producers. Uh, we've been, you know, just chopping around the last couple of sessions, waiting for this new news to come across the wire, and it turned out to be a little bit friendly. And now we've got, you know, corn trading at prices not seen since uh, you know, just last Thursday. So we're still up against the big technical resistance level, psychologically significant. That $5 level is going to be a doozy. But if we get out above there, you know, regardless of the fundamental backdrop, I wouldn't be surprised to see that spur some technical short covering from the funds. And I think you could probably make the same case for the soybean market at the $13 marker. So if we can get some good technical closes to round out the week, I think that could start to feed on itself into next week's trade. But it's all about follow through heading into tomorrow's trade. Yeah, we talked uh, off air. I mean, if I'm a producer and I didn't do anything, are you telling me to do anything now? Or if you've got a guy that's long, are you telling him to do anything now? What's uh, What's been the advice that's gone out over the phones today? Yeah, so I guess uh, we work with a wide variety of clients. For guys that, that are long, we are looking at tightening some things up above some of those psychologically significant levels, $5 and $13. I do think the upside, you know, might be somewhat limited, particularly in the corn market, just because the demand side isn't really there. But that could certainly start to change here uh, as we get closer towards the end of the year. Soybeans, I think, you know, they might have a little bit more of a story. So if we do get out above you know, $13 with some conviction. There's a cluster of major moving averages up in between about 1315 and 1325. You've got the 50, the 100, and the 200-day moving oh. average all coming in there. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a retest of those levels. That's interesting, too. Yeah, and a lot of times those levels kind of attract the trade to get up there because they want to see what might happen or if they can set up any stops. That's, uh, that's good advice. And so um, going forward for the rest of the year, uh, are we going to see – these numbers get solidified. Are you looking for anything else? We got about 10 seconds before we got to go on a break. Yeah, well, I think the volatility will probably continue to, to shrivel out. You know, as the harvest continues to wrap up, the volatility dies out, and focus will turn up to South America, and potentially some fireworks come from down there. So it'll be interesting to see. But volatility, uh, you know, so it's, it's going to be all eyes on South America. On, I agree. On that end. I agree. All right, thanks. Stay right there. We're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and talk more with Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures in Chicago after this. I'm going to give you 80 seconds. 8-0, what are your thoughts? Oh, wow, 80 seconds. All right. Well, one, 187 and a half to 188 has been a big inflection point for the December live cattle market, really going back to July. That was previous resistance and was the eventual breakout point in September. And then that's where we broke down from at the beginning of October. So we're right at this key level. If we're able to get a, a conviction close out above 188, potentially that spurs some more momentum to retest the top end of the range near 192. However, I'm not sure the market's going to have uh, enough gas in the tank to get us out above there with consecutive closes into the weekend. So uh, working with guys who mitigate need to mitigate some risk, we're looking at the short side from these levels. Uh, failure here, I think, could potentially take us back towards the low end of the range near 184. But all in all, I don't really see the market falling out of bed from these levels. I think there's still enough of a fundamental backdrop here in the near term to, to keep prices at least in a consolidated range going into the end of the year. These inflation numbers we got this week, change your uh, view on anything when it comes to the cattle? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, we're keeping a close eye on the bonds. They're, you know, they had a, a nice little relief rally yesterday, but rolling back over today, I think that's going to be the main thing going forward. I think if you get the bonds right, you'll probably get a lot of these markets right, especially that are demand-driven like beef. So the, the bond market will certainly be a, a focal point for a lot of commodity traders heading into the end of the year. I agree with you. All right, great stuff as usual. Thank you very much, Oliver Slope, Blue Line Futures in Chicago. Bring it back to Nashville so I can give it back to Suzanne one more time. Big day, busy day. Looking forward to what you have coming.